Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In this episode of Sunday Reflection segment, we present the homily for the 24th Sunday of the year based on the liturgical readings of the A cycle. The readings of the 24th Sunday of the year dwell on the theme, Imitating Jesus' Forgiveness. An interesting incident said to have happened when Mahatma Gandhi was gravely ill. A Hindu father whose child was killed by a Muslim comes to Gandhi in great grief and remorse because in revenge he killed a Muslim child. He kneels before Gandhi and asks him how he can get over his guilt and regret. Gandhi, who was gravely ill, tells the man, In reparation for your revengeful act, you must adopt a Muslim boy and raise him as your own son. But you must raise the boy as a Muslim. Then you will find true inner peace. Overwhelmed at the inconceivable thought of raising a son as a Muslim, the Hindu man leaves Gandhi's room in total disarray. Later, however, he returns and again kneels beside Gandhi's bed. He tells Gandhi, Now I understand what you want me to do. You want me to take the hostility from my heart and replace it with love. I have decided to do what you want of me. I will adopt a Muslim boy as my own son and raise him as a Muslim. This incident clearly shows that true forgiveness is more than a passive resignation to a bad situation. Jesus teaches all Christians to use forgiveness as a positive and creative force to bring light into the darkened world. The readings of the 24th Sunday of the year invite us to forgive our offenders and be reconciled with them. They offer the path of forgiveness, mercy and reconciliation and challenge us to walk this path as we live our Christian life in imitation of Jesus. In the first reading, the wise Jew, Jesus ben Sirach, often known as ben Sirach, a teacher of wisdom warns his listeners to avoid divine retribution. If they don't lay aside anger, forgive and show mercy to the offender, they cannot expect to receive the same from God as God treats them as they treat each other. Hence, according to Ben Sirach, it is unwise to nurse grudges and act revengefully. Instead, it is wise to forgive because our lifespan is very short and our eternal destiny is decided by how we forgive, how we work for reconciliation with those who offend us and how we render humble and loving service to them. Today's Psalm, Psalm 103, speaks beautifully about God's forgiving love by saying, God is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. We are invited to imitate God's forgiveness and compassion as it brings inner healing, restores our spiritual health and builds up our relationship with God and others. In the second reading, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans addressing the existing tension between Gentile Christians who were liberal in their attitude towards law and the Jewish Christians who were scrupulous about legal observances urges them to be mutually tolerant. He tells them, as Christians, they exist in this world not for themselves, but only in relation to Jesus, the risen and exalted Lord, who was crucified for their sins and that of the world, and who pardoned his crucifiers from the cross. Hence, as persons baptized in Christ, having died with Christ to a life of sin, risen with him to a new life of grace, 
related to Jesus as brothers and sisters and as members of God's family. They should not harbor hatred and bitterness in their hearts. Instead, they must walk the path of forgiveness in imitation of Jesus, who taught them by his own example of forgiving those who killed him. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, by narrating the parable of two debtors, and answering Peter's question, how often one should forgive, Jesus communicates four important truths about Christian virtue of forgiveness. Firstly, there is no reasonable limit to forgiveness. Whenever people offend us and genuinely seek forgiveness, we must forgive them. Secondly, we must forgive in order to be forgiven. If we do not forgive the offenses of those who offend us, we have no right to ask God forgiveness for our sins. Thirdly, we represent the greater debtor in the parable because we commit sins every day and we are in need of God's greater forgiveness than others. Finally, forgiveness does not mean condoning the evil committed by the offender. Forgiving our offenders and being reconciled with them do not mean indefinite tolerance, overlooking and disregarding the evil and the unjust behavior of the offender. Jesus wants us that while forgiving others, we must call them to change their actions that are evil and unjust. Though God's forgiveness is easily available to us through the sacrament of reconciliation, its full effect is experienced in our lives. If we genuinely seek mutual healing of wounds caused by hurts and effectively bring about real change in our evil attitudes and behaviors. On this 24th Sunday of the year, the readings and the liturgy invite us, firstly, to forgive and be reconciled with our neighbor. In the light of eternity and shortness of the span of our life, harboring old grudges is pointless. Our ability to forgive is the measure of the depth of our Christian faith. The forgiveness we offer others is the indispensable condition which makes it possible for us to receive God's forgiveness. That's why St. Francis of Assisi prays, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. Our failure to offer pardon means that we have forgotten God's goodness to us and have not fully appreciated the unconditional forgiveness we receive from Him. What God expects from us is limitless forgiving and an ability to overlook faults and keep on loving even in the face of insults. Secondly, the liturgy today calls us to remember the advantage of being reconciled to our neighbor. Speaking of the advantage of offering others forgiveness, Alexander Pope once said, to hear is human, to forgive is divine. In forgiving others wholeheartedly, we become godlike steady and strong personalities. When we withhold forgiveness, we continue to be the victims, the weaklings, caught up with our hurt and pain. On the contrary, when we offer forgiveness, we move beyond the pain, the resentment and the anger. When we forgive, we make the choice that heals us and others. Finally, the liturgy today calls us to remember that forgiveness implies a choice to befriend and let go the hurt. It is hard to forget a painful event and all hurts it has caused. Though we cannot wipe away the painful event from our memory, we can choose to befriend it, to move beyond it and to reach out in love and forgiveness towards those persons who were instrumental in causing the hurt. Jesus invites us to make this choice to forgive. Though we may still remember the pain and the hurt vividly in our memory, if you make this choice to forgive, Jesus will walk with us and make us victorious like him. On this 24th Sunday, gathering around the altar of God, let us ask the Lord the gift of forgiveness so that in the week ahead, we can become true agents of forgiveness, thereby 
bring joy and god's blessings in the life of all whom we encounter amen thank you for watching this video stay blessed until we see you again with another video